Hi, this is Kevin Krug. Just wanted to show uh, how I created I created a new account in the John Deere Operations Center and I loaded some data so I wanted to show some highlights of different features and things that are in here and kind of show you what it looks like just by loading in USB data. So essentially what I've done is I started out with a blank slate today. I came over to the, uh, the files manager and I clicked on uh, the up, upload files. So I brought in all of these different zipped up CN1 files and had it go through the processing status there. Uh, so you see there's a couple of them that have failed. Uh, quite a few of them will have processed and, and, and provided out data, which then in, in turn turned into that map view that we had in just in the operation center there. Uh, so I'll show you uh, now how uh, we will be able to upload files uh, into the system here and how you can just quickly grab and drag files in that you want to upload. So I click on the upload files. I now then come back to my file explorer and I'm going to go and look for some data that I have uh, that I want to bring into the system. All right. Uh, I'm going to come out here and try to find some of my um, older data from the uh, 470 and the 540 quad track. That was a couple of the ones that failed to load. Uh, for that, for whatever reason, um, this uh, the spring's data. So it was really the um, the data that came in underneath this 10 May load here. So I'm going to take um, some of these other files here, and I'll bring that one in. Um, and then I can also come back here and find the one then for the 540 as well. I won't go to that 10 May one again. I'll pick one of these little bit older ones here and see if I can bring that data in. Click upload. Um, it goes through its process then. Of, of uploading the data in there then letting it go through the file processing status. So um, after this processes we'll kind of jump back in here and I'll show you uh, some of the other aspects that have that have been brought in automatically through the system here. So you can see that one is already loaded. Uh, the other one is, is uploading here uh, right now as well. Okay, back here we've had a few of the files that have uh, come in and finished processing. A few more of them I kicked off reprocessing to see if they'll take uh, and upload a few others. But just wanted to kind of go over and show you essentially what comes in then uh, from these files I just uploaded. Uh, basic CN1 files that have come in either or mostly from USB sticks. Um, so on the main map of the operation center you will see some of these boundaries here that have uh, now different information in there, so it has which ones are have seeding, which ones have application based on the latest stuff they're harvest uh, for that one where we don't have any new data that's come in through the, the CN1 files. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to share here though essentially is the listing then of, so again, this is data from 2019 uh, and then 2020 uh, planting data. Uh, I don't believe I got any grabbed any 2018 data, but so it's really just a couple years worth of data from um, you know four or five different machines uh, that would really have that. I guess maybe six machines with the combines. And here is a listing then of all of the client farm fields, grower farm field structure that is there. Uh, so you can see this is quite a long list. There are a few of them that have boundaries that have been uh, created or at least uh, you know a, a partial boundary that is there uh, as a placeholder. But this is just the kind of the mess of data that is on the USB sticks based on how every different person has um, recorded um, the data, how they've you know put it into the display to be able to, to log it there. So that is a list of all the different data that is there. Um, so next thing I wanted to kind of jump into um, field analyzer and show you some of the geospatial data. So I'm going to click on this field here, um, that when this case is called the big field as part of the Phelps Christian. Um, so it has planting data that has come in uh, on, on the CN1 file. Uh, so when I click on Field Analyzer there, um, it brings in, so essentially for this field, uh, for this year that we have here of 2020, we have three different uh, operations that have happened on it. So it has the, the seeding operation uh, that has come in from the planter uh, to be able to have the, the corn operation that was there, has the as applied rate, has the varieties, um, 
and then it also has the seeding speed um, that, that it was done. So how, what was the rate at which this was planted at? And I would say this looks very, very accurate for what um, the, the planting speed would have been on this field. Uh, so that's the, the as applied rate. It doesn't have any of the target rate information, which uh, is interesting from the fact that we there was a prescription on this field and that did not get brought in and processed, but uh, that's the look at the seeding data anyway. Then next, there's an application. Um, so this was done with 32% with also some herbicide in it. Uh, similar type of deal, the as applied rate. We do have the target rate as a layer, but there's no target rate behind this. So this is really just an empty coverage map uh, to know that that's what was covered, but no essential rate associated with that target. And then the same thing with the speed map um, that was generated. Um, so I would again say this is probably pretty accurate for that 32% application that we have. Uh, the next one then was one from early May where uh, another herbicide application was done to that field. Um, so I have the speed there uh, and that's uh, probably, yeah, that's not looking real accurate with a lot of it being very low speeds there. So something's happening during this layer. I would say these up here uh, for the majority you know, of the time there was probably more accurate that we have. Again, target rate is similar where it has the coverage but no rates associated behind it. Uh, but then we do have the as applied rate. Um, and so this was really targeted at 10 gallons uh, per acre. So pretty, pretty good uh, with where we're at on that, uh, on that one. So that's a look at uh, some of the data that comes in. Uh, one of the next things I want to be able to do here is we'll kind of we'll come back to that operation map and look at all of those different um, fields that we have and kind of where some of those boundaries are at because there's a new feature here uh, in the operation center that we just noticed that is boundary creation. So again, I didn't do anything to set up these boundaries, just uploaded raw USB uh, data, CN1 files to the files manager. It processed out this information automatically. Um, so now I will go back underneath here to the tools icon and there's this boundary generator here. Um, so it kind of tells you uh, about what it's going to do, kind of then also the priority of how it's going to create these boundaries, right? So really, you know, if you have a seeding layer from this year or last year, uh, that is what it's going to use or harvest, um, then down to application, you know, any seeding and down from there. So I'm going to run uh, the boundary generator here and, uh, and see what it creates for boundaries for any of those other fields that we were uh, missing, missing data for, didn't have a boundary uh, in the system. So we'll let that thing run and then we'll check back in on that in a little bit when it's done running. All right, uh, back here now, I want to go to the uh, land manager to show you where um, the listing of all of the, uh, the farms are at and, and how you manage the boundaries and stuff from within there. So I ran that boundary generator um, and essentially no boundaries got created through the auto process. Um, so as I was reading about that a little bit closer then, you know, you type in auto here and nothing came in. Um, it essentially said that you have to have an operation and an inactive boundary in order for it to actually create a boundary. And in our case here, we have um, you know 280 fields that have been brought in. Uh, when I click on active, there's 42 active boundaries. So those are the ones that we are seeing on the, on the operational map. Uh, and then if I click on uh, inactive and uncheck active, Either way, it's the same 42 um, fields. And so I have um, basically then um, the same active and inactive boundary for every field. So I have an active one and an inactive one. So it did not create any new ones because I didn't have any inactive ones uh, with operational data behind it. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what makes a boundary inactive to get it to be created here, but that is how um, this is, is working then. Um, so let's look at that piece of it as well.